I am so pumped for this episode of Three Questions with the famous Principal L. Not only is he a famous administrator and known all over the world, amazing speaker. I've seen him speak a couple times, just blows my mind, does incredible work. He's also a basketball fan and uh, he's a Sixers fan and my Raptors just beat the Sixers, so I had to wear my Raptors shirt for this. I know. I'm sorry, man. I had to do it. I had to do it. Uh, but hey, I am, I'm so pumped. Uh, I've loved being able to just to chat with you too and, uh, you know, kind of talk you know, off the podcast as well. And you have inspired so many people, so many people look up to you and I'm one of those people. And I just want to thank you for your leadership, all the work that you've done. And when you look back at, you know, your education experience, all the people that you've inspired, if you look back to a teacher, when you were a kid, you know, maybe as a teacher yourself, like who is a teacher that really inspired you and, and what stuck out to you? Um, there's so many teachers, George, who have inspired me. Um, you know, my story is one where, you know, I was raised by a single mom. She never owned a car, never had a driver's license. So my teachers and coaches pretty much helped me do everything. But when I think about that one, in, in high school, um, I had an English teacher, Marsha Pincus, who really saw a lot in me, challenged me, uh, challenged me to read, you know, Chaucer and Richard Wright and Shakespeare and um, she knew I came from a struggling family. She often talks now about how she would see me coming to school late from the, uh, from the store, grabbing something to eat. She never really hassled me because she knew how important that was to me, but she uh, was always a big fan. So Marsha P. Pincus, my, English, my high school English teacher at Simon Gratz High School, uh, where the famous John Chaney, who just passed away, oh, wow. was the actual basketball coach there. He was a Temple Temple mm -hmm. College coach for, for years. And um, a couple years ago, I actually spoke in New Mexico at a state teacher and administrators conference, and Marsha Pinkett showed up. No way. And spoke and stood up and told everybody, <laughs> this guy that you see right now, yeah, she's retired now and retired in New Mexico. She said, this guy you saw right now came to my class late. You know, <laughs> he, you know, he, you know, he fought me all the time, but, but, but she, but she talked about how, uh, it's amazing. He told a story about how she never really felt confident being a teacher until she received a letter from me thanking her when I was graduating from college. She said she was a young white teacher in an all black school. Didn't really know if, if she really had, um, found her way. And then she said, when I got that letter from you, I knew I was making a difference. And so she was that, she was that one, a teach many, one of many, but one that stands out for me. That that's, that is, I gotta, I gotta play the shout out horn for Marsha Pincus. <laughs> that's, that's a good basketball sound there. Right. So that, yeah, that yeah. Like, I can't even imagine how proud she would have been seeing you there and thinking about that impact. And it, 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 I always think, you know, about how, like, I was a pretty bad kid. I, I struggled in high school and I got in trouble. And I remember um, I was speaking and I saw my, my former principal and I started sweating. I'm like, oh, he's probably thinking, <laughs> what is this guy doing, right? And I talked to him and like the first thing I said, i like, hey, Mr. Steele, I'm, I'm like so sorry. I am like, I was such a, he's like, he's like, you are not a bad kid at all. I'm like, really? And he goes, and I'll never forget this. He said, do you remember when you got in that fight with that science teacher? I said, yeah. He goes, you were right. I was like, well, I knew it. I knew I was right. And it's so funny because you can't say it at the time when I was a kid, but it was amazing, right? But they, you know, even in, I think sometimes even the times that we look back and that we struggled in school, maybe weren't on our best behavior. I think teachers like, you know, Marsha Pincus see those amazing things in us, right? But like, what? A, I, she must be so proud of you. That's amazing. Yeah, she was, and she knew I needed. You know, I mean, the, the, the majority of professional women. She knew I needed a male in my life. I grew up without a dad, so you know, you I, you, you you hit the the, the basketball horn. Mm -hmm. But she um, so she connected me with her brother, who was a producer for KYW News Radio. Then became an executive producer for Prism Sports, which was an armor sports channel, televised all the six of home games. So Larry actually gave me my first job in television through my relationship with Marsha Pincus and her brothers now, Larry's like a big time producer for 
NFL with you know with the uh, producers of Super Bowls and that kind of. But he gave me my what? first TV job, and and it was I mean it's just amazing how you connect with a teacher. That's and they incredible. Impact you for the rest of your life, and Larry still stays in touch with me. Marsha Pincus does. So it was a um, it was a it was just a great connection. I'm glad I was open to the influence, and she saw in me what some others may not have seen, but she knew that I was interested in in media and speaking and and in television and connected me with her brother, and mm-hmm. they they became a family for me. I just I just wrote down, uh, Principal L will hook up me with Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. It. It's, it, it's now it's recorded. So you can't back out now. All right. So you are uh, like people just revere your work across the world, how you advocate for kids, how you advocate for teachers. And seriously, someone I've looked up to ever since I first, I, I would actually say I probably became aware of your work probably 10 plus years ago when I started off as a principal and just, just you've been an inspiration to so many administrators And so I'm like really curious on what your answer is to this one. Thinking about all the administrators that you've had the opportunity to work with, who is an admin that inspired you and and what did they do that, that, that inspired you? So I had another high school English teacher, uh, Deidre Farnbury, who became the principal. So I went back to teach at the high school where I attended. So when I went back to teach, she was the principal and she just told me how how she was she shared some of those same stories you know your principal did you know <laughs> some of the issues i had but she right. said it's just so i'm so proud to see you come back and teach and to be your principal to be your colleague she said it was an honor and then she became superintendent of the school district i became a principal and so wow. again she said full circle you know i've been your teacher your principal and then i won principal of the year i won the marcus a foster award which marcus foster you research that mm-hmm. very outstanding you know individual um and leader and um she presented me with the uh marcus foster award as a superintendent my former um high school uh, uh english teacher uh african-american female she was my kamala harris decades ago wow because uh, you just you didn't really see too many uh we had a a, a powerful um connie clayton was a awesome black female superintendent but you didn't really see many at that time 20 30 years ago um but she was a great role model great example was a mentor for me and um and to this day again it's been a great great resource for me so she taught me really what leadership was about and she told me often that if you if you become an administrator and you're worried about losing your job that you will really be selling kids out that you've got to take risks you've got to do mm. the right thing and that's where i really learned that 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 this job as a principal it's not about being a boss it's about service totally. leadership is about service if you don't serve you can't lead and if service is beneath you leadership will always be beyond you so if there's anybody out in that audience who wants to become an administrator because you want to move away from taking care of other people. You want to move away from supporting people. Oh. Leadership is not, that's not the answer. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be teaching adults now. Right. And that, right. that can be even more difficult than teaching kids. But for me, it is the greatest honor um, to oh. be able to support teachers. As you know, that's been my, I, you know, I, I, I actually was basically almost fired from my current job because I was supporting my teachers so much and wanted higher pay, you know, for them. But the teachers stood up for me. Uh, we'll have to talk about another podcast. I remember, I just remember that when you said that. Yeah, that was, that was, I was actually hanging out. I was somewhere with, with, with Jimmy Casas and, and, um, and Jeff and, um, and found out. And, and, but you know what, what I found out was that my teachers walked yeah. out yeah. in support of me. And that was, to me, it was just like, I'm like, I, I must choose to stay. Like, that's my, you know, that's, that's, awesome. my, that's my mantra. That's my belief. But I have to when people put their jobs on the line like that for you, you know. It's, it's actually interesting. Obviously, you made such an impact that your teachers and your administrators follow you around. <laughs> like, they're still, <laughs> they're like, I don't want to get away from this guy. They're just like, it's amazing that you're still connected with them uh, to this day. So it shows you an impact, right? So yes, sir. what? Yes, sir. Sorry, what was the name of the administrator? We gotta give a shout uh, out. Her name is uh, Dr. Deidre Farnbury. The D E I D R E 
Farmby, F A R M B R Y, Farmby. All right, shout out. Time. What's that? We got to do the shout out button. <laughs> shout out. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you, and she's a king maker because she's responsible for many administrators yeah. becoming successful. Uh, she blessed so many with her with her leadership. It was always about doing, you know, for others. So um, Philadelphia's a tough place. So I spent over 20 years in the Philadelphia school district. But um, it's leadership like that that really helps to influence others. They, that That is true. Like, I, I know that sounds almost cliche when people say, oh, like, you know, leaders develop more leaders. But it is true. And, like, the best administrator that I ever had, everyone that seemed to come in contact with her that would maybe go on to leadership, admin, she would. And honestly, sometimes people, like, I didn't want to be an administrator. And within a year, I was because of her, right? Like, she saw things in you. Um, just like your administrator. And so you have this, this, you know, amazing career. I'm sure there's things that you say, like, I wish I could have done this better. Uh, you know, your constant, constant, uh, growth in profession, but people put you on such a pedestal. And I totally understand why, because of the work that you do. But if you could go back and look at like your first year in teaching, um, maybe even, you know, I might even switch this question up. Like, what about even your first year admin, whatever, um, what advice would you give to yourself? Like that you could go back and say, I wish I would have done this, but different. All right. So first of all, that pedestal that I'm um, probably about that high <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> when, when, right. I, when I, when I, when I thought that I could skip college and go to the NBA when I was playing ball, <laughs> my teacher told me my Marsha Pincus one and, and DJ farm and many others, uh, said, listen, you can't jump over a credit card. <laughs> So you are not going to the NBA. They said, but you're smart enough to get an MBA. So do that. Yeah, they probably but, said um, you can go to the NBA. You're just not playing. Right, exactly. <laughs> Make sure else. you get tickets. Make sure you get tickets. <laughs> but I, the, probably what I would tell, I was hard on myself, man. I, yeah. I, I, I really doubted myself and probably every leader. One thing is I, I was an assistant principal first. So I got a chance to kind of see the dance floor from the balcony as an AP for a couple of years. But when I became a principal, I was very young. I was I was under forty, and um, and most many of my teachers were older than me, more experienced. And uh, I just submitted. My mother told me. My mother passed in two thousand two. I became a mm -hmm. principal in nineteen ninety nine. Um, started teaching in eighty seven. So I've been teaching twelve years. And um, and my mother said, "Listen, when you when you become a principal, you better realize." that there will be old ladies there who have been teaching for principal after principal after principal. She said, bow down to them and learn from those old ladies. That's awesome. She said, don't be arrogant. Arrogance is the Achilles heel of the school. Mm. My mother was a past professor in our school district and it was the best advice she ever gave me. And I, I often, I was very hard on myself because I, I wanted to kind of be the principal that, I knew I would become, but I wanted to be that principal right away. Because sometimes we get trained to think that we can come in and turn a tough situation mm -hmm. around, and it just doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't get bad overnight, and it doesn't change overnight. It takes time, and people have to trust you. you got to develop relationships. The kids got to know you're going to be there. The teachers have to know. The community needs to know. But once, um, once I was able to get that rock, that boulder moving, you can't stop it. That's awesome. So I think that what I what I would do differently is I would I would take great pride in the small gains, the small steps, one one person at a time, one victory at a time, instead of thinking that hey, you know, I mean there there were times when I was like, listen, this principal thing is not for me. I need to be selling used cars, right? <laughs> because this is, you know, nobody likes you. It's lonely. Right. You know, and you're making decisions. Half the staff is happy. The other staff is not. Right. You reverse your decision and the other half is, it, it, it's, leadership is tough, man. It is, mm -hmm. it is very tough. It is not for the weak. And I tell people, leadership is simply like this. If you can't hack it, get your jacket, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> because it is, I mean, it's hot at, at all times, you know, um, but. But if you if you if you keep the kids and the staff at heart and know you're doing the right thing, then you will go to bed every night with satisfaction mm -hmm. and you'll wake up every morning with determination. So um, that's what I, I would I would tell my younger self. Savor those small victories, embrace the struggles because they they made me so much better because mm -hmm. now I don't I, I don't mind when somebody comes and says, hey, listen, you, you work at a struggling school. Why don't you go and work at a successful school? Because you know what? I'm all about 
I take great pride in that. That one kid that calls me 10 years later say, hey, you know, I, I was a problem in school, but um, you, you never gave up on me. You, you, you drove to Richmond, Virginia from Philly because you promised me when my mother moved that that would not be the last time that you would see me. Mm. When that kid calls me and says, thanks for coming to visit me, that, that's when I know, you know what, I, I've, 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 I've fulfilled my mom's dream of making sure that serving others was the key. And, and, and that's what she wanted for me. Also getting my doctorate too, which took mm -hmm. me damn near 20 years, <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't let her down. So the only thing that the only reason I didn't give up is that she made me commit to her before she left this earth. I'm the only mm -hmm. one of her eight kids to have a college degree at all. And she said, you need, I said, mom, I have a master's. I'm, she said, get your doctorate. And uh, I finally did it a couple years ago, but so. That's that. That's amazing. And when you said about the like getting that boulder rolling, your mom set that off with you because that that idea of going into school kind of guns ablaze and like you're gonna fix everybody, as opposed to like, hey, let's value the people. Because I've always said this is that if you if you go in trying to pe and people think you're trying to change them, they're gonna fight you the entire way. But if people know you're valued, they'll they'll go to the ends of the earth for you. And so like like it's amazing to hear kind of all the stories and how connected they are like how you were that teacher that administrator for a kid but you know your teacher was that for you and really that influence that you have so i i, I can't that's that, that the immortality yep. of influence right I love that, it. Love that's it, it. That, that that that's the key and um and 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 it's, it's so important for us to realize that get it just you know people are naturally resistant to change and so anybody yeah. out in that audience who's thinking about leadership as well, you better understand that people, they're not resisting you, right. they resist change because change is moving them from that comfort zone into the learning zone. The learning zone is close to the mm. frustration zone. So it, it's a struggle, they don't resist you, they resist change, but as long as they know that you're, in, you're gonna support them through the change, they, they eventually uh, come around and realize that we're, we're, we're stronger together. Principal L, you're you're amazing. I love the stories that you tell. I'm so excited to talk. When the next time the Raptors beat the Sixers, I'm gonna feel bad about it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, this has been three questions with Principal L. Thanks for joining everybody. Yeah.